We are at a crossroads in the PC gaming space. CPU generations are coming out faster and faster, pushing the performance envelope. And unless you spend $1,600 on a GPU, they're having a bit of trouble keeping up. So whether you're thinking about upgrading your old rig or building one of those shiny new AM5 systems everyone's been talking about, stick around because I might be able to help you out with that. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna take a look at two different AMD CPU generations, Ryzen 5000 series and the new Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, or AM4 and AM5 as they're most commonly called. Because of all of you watching the channel and my awesome deal hunting, I was able to pick up two CPUs from each generation that actually shows a wide range from both performance and price categories. So let's take a closer look at these two CPU generations. First up is the best-selling Ryzen 5 5600X. It's got six cores and 12 threads with a max boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz. It's a 65 watt TDP processor and it has 32 megabytes of L3 cache. The next CPU on the list is the AM5 replacement for the 5600X, the Ryzen 5 7600X. This is a six core 12 thread CPU with a max boost clock of 5.3 gigahertz. Its TDP is quite a bit higher at 105 watts, and it's got the same 32 megabytes of L3 cache. Now that we started with the entry level, why don't we throw in the biggest and baddest gaming CPUs that AMD has to offer? Representing the AM4 platform is the ever popular Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. This comes with eight cores and 16 threads with a max boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz. It has the same 105 watt TDP as the 7600X, but has a much higher 96 megabytes of L3 cache. Last, but certainly not least, is the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. This also has eight cores and 16 threads, but boosts all the way up to five gigahertz. It's got a 120 watt TDP and has the same 96 megabytes of L3 cache as its AM4 sibling. This is the best gaming CPU that AMD has to offer right now. And if you're thinking about picking up any of these awesome processors, I'll leave links below in the description to make it easier for you to find the best pricing. Currently, Amazon holds that title for all four of these CPUs. Now these prices are current as of the time of this filming. They do change. Oh, before I forget, if you enjoy PC builds or review videos, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button down below and come back for more content because you'll find it all right here. With that out of the way, let's move on to the test bench. For the most part, these builds are the same. I reused the parts that I could, like the CPU cooler, the power supply, and the GPU. By the way, cooling is very important when testing CPUs because you wanna give them the best chance possible to perform at their peak. I decided to go with a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler for this test. I chose the Fractal Design Lumen S36. It attaches using the stock AMD clip system in case you're wondering. The power supply is the Fantex Revolt X 1000 watt. It's 80 plus platinum and fully modular with plenty of power for the GPU. Speaking of the GPU, I use the MSI RTX 4080 Gaming X Trio. It's the highest end graphics card I've got to avoid GPU bottleneck. And it allows these processors to really stretch their legs. Of course, since they're different platforms, I had to use different motherboards and different RAM. I decided to go with MSI products for everything, even though this is not sponsored by them, by the way. And I already had the same motherboard in the two different platforms from them as well. So it just worked out. For the AM4 board, I used the MSI B550 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. It's an ATX size motherboard with excellent VRM cooling and supports PCI 4.0. I paired a 16 gigabyte kit of G-Skills Trident Z Royal clocked at 3600 megahertz for this setup. The AM5 motherboard I went with is the MSI B650 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. It's basically the new and improved Tomahawk with two 8-pin power connectors and more M.2s. Oh, it's also DDR5 instead of DDR4, which AM4 is only. The RAM kit I chose for this was the only one I had, which is also G-Skills Trident Z Neo running at 6,000 megahertz. This kit has 32 gigabytes of capacity instead of the 16 like the AM4 kit. It's just the most common kit that they sell for AM5. I guess that means I have to upgrade my AM4 system now. 
Okay, time for some benchmarks. I decided to run both gaming and productivity just in case you like to do both. Before I get into the games, I ran them on medium presets and I tested on both 1080p and 1440p. I also did three runs for each game and took the average of those. Call of Duty was up first. This test was done playing the Warzone game mode only. I'll admit, I don't actually own the game. I ran all four CPUs using the balanced preset without any upscaling or sharpening. I was surprised by the fact that the 7600X and 5800X 3D achieved the exact same results. This was at 1440p, by the way. As expected, the 5600X trailed behind and the 7800X 3D was out in front, but not by much. It only managed about a 14 FPS increase over the 7600X. At 1080p, that lead increased quite a bit. I'm not sure what was going on with the 1080p versus 1440p results for the 7600X and 5800X 3D. They both did better at 1440p than 1080p. Battle Royales are hard to keep consistent because different areas of the map put more demand on the system. All the settings are the same, these are the results I got. Cyberpunk 2077 has to be part of the benchmark since it's extremely demanding, even without ray tracing. This test used the medium preset as well with no DLSS or FSR enabled. At 1440p, once again, the 7600X and 5800X 3D were even, while the 5600X fell behind by about 34 FPS. The 7800X 3D only saw a slight increase to 171.8. 1080p paints a very different picture. The 7800X 3D manages to hit over 200 FPS, while the 7600X and 5800X 3D only see 181.4 and 171.4. Forza Horizon 5 is great to test since it's got a built-in benchmark which keeps results consistent. Running the medium preset without DLSS or FSR yielded some very impressive numbers. 1440p resolution was already over 200 FPS with almost every CPU, except for the poor 5600X. It managed 185.9. Close, but not quite. In this game, the 5800X 3D and 7600X had more of a divide with the AM5 CPU besting AM4 by 35 FPS. Dropping down to 1080p netted an even larger swing in favor of AM5. Most of the CPUs only saw about a 5 FPS increase at 1080p, while the 7800X 3D experienced four times that. These are some wild results. I honestly didn't expect this. Fortnite is here for two reasons. One, because it's still popular, and two, I have a lot of fun playing. This game was run on DirectX 12 using the medium preset at 100% render scale with TSR on medium. 1440p resolution was first, and the 5800X 3D beat the 5600X by about 28 FPS. But the 7600X beat the X3D CPU by an even greater 59 FPS. Surprisingly, the 7800X 3D didn't pull that far ahead of the pack it only managed 16 FPS over the 7600X. 1080p increased the gaps between each CPU. The AM5 processors were quite a bit ahead of the last gen competition, and the 7800X 3D even passed the 300 FPS mark. Yes, I did throw in some productivity benchmarks. Nothing scientific, of course. I ran Cinebench R23, the multi-core test, and was fairly impressed with these six core CPUs. The 7600X ended up scoring higher than the 5800X 3D at 14,782 versus 11,456. Even the 5600X didn't disappoint though. It achieved 10,302. The second test was the Blender benchmark. This completes three renders, Monster, Junk Shop, and Classroom. These results were a little more spaced out. The two AM5 CPUs seem to have much better rendering performance compared to their AM4 counterparts. Honestly though, any of these CPUs would be fine to dabble in a little bit of content creation. But this channel is all about gaming, so that's what I focused on. I just figured I'd do a little bit of extra work and give you some bonus content. Now that all the testing is out of the way, there's a few things I want to talk about. The first is platform cost. This is something to keep in mind if you're currently running AM4. If you have a 300 or 400 series motherboard, you could upgrade your BIOS and drop in any 5000 series CPU and see a major uplift in performance. It doesn't need to be a 5800X 3D. The 5600X would still see a huge improvement in games over something like a 2700X or even a 3900X. 
But if you're building new anyway, cheaper B650 boards that cost under $200 are now available. Couple that with the reduced cost of DDR5 and catch a sale on a 7600 or 7600X, and you've got yourself a great setup that can even handle an RTX 4080. Plus, it is a much more upgradable platform. Remember, this is the start of the AM5 generation, and AMD has promised the same extended support that we experienced with AM4. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this whole video? This is Danny's recommendations, and I've got two of them, honestly. You can kind of modify them a little bit, but generally, this is the way you should be going. And it honestly completely depends on your budget. If you've already got an AM4 built system, but want more performance, upgrade that CPU. Already on Ryzen 5000? Go for a 5800X3D. It'll last you. Upgrading from Ryzen 2000 or 3000 series? My recommendation is the 5700X. They've dropped in price a lot, and you get more cores and threads in addition to that awesome IPC and clock speed increase. Now, if you're building a new system and you're thinking about buying the 5800X 3D, don't. Just go for the 7600X in an AM5 build. You could always upgrade later to a 7800X 3D. If you have 5800X 3D money, you should just be building with AM5. It's a simple solution. And don't forget about all the added bonuses either. Things like a guaranteed upgrade path and DDR5 memory can be very enticing. I gave you all the information, now you've got to make the decision. But if this wasn't enough and you're looking for more parts comparison videos or full out PC builds, hit that subscribe button down below and give us a like while you're down there because it's the best way for YouTube to promote the channel. That's it for this one. As I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one. We're never meant to last but all the fun times we had I'll never forget